Welcome to our lecture online. Here's one of the questions of our viewers. It has to deal with thermodynamics and kinetic theory of molecules, gaseous molecules in the atmosphere. So let's say that we have one mole of nitrogen. Remember that nitrogen is a diatomic molecule and it's at an initial temperature of T sub naught. It is mixed with one mole of helium at an initial temperature of 7 thirds T sub naught. What will be the final temperature after the gases are mixed? It seems like a simple problem, but is it? And is it easier to find the answer? Give it a try and see what you get. And then this is how you actually get the correct answer. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to figure out the initial energy brought into the system. So when you think about it, there's going to be a system and the system is going to contain two types of molecules, one mole of nitrogen plus one mole of helium. So they both bring a certain amount of energy into the system. How much energy? Well, let's go ahead and use this equation that the internal energy of a gas is equal to the number of moles times C sub V times the temperature in Kelvin. Now let's work that out for both of these gases. So first for nitrogen, the internal energy is going to be one mole. Now what's C sub V for, high, for nitrogen? Well, it's the diatomic molecule. For diatomic molecule, it's 5 over 2 times the gas constant. So 5 over 2 times R. And the temperature initially is at T sub naught. So that would be equal to 5 over 2 R T sub naught. That's the, that's the energy that the nitrogen brings into the system. Now, how much does the helium bring in? Well, the internal energy is equal to one mole. Now, since helium is a monatomic molecule, the C sub V is 3 over 2 R, but the initial temperature is 7 thirds T sub naught. So 7 thirds T sub naught. So the three scans out, that leaves us with 7 over 2 R sub T. So the, inter the internal energy total of the two gases together would be equal to 5 over 2 RT plus 7 over 2 RT and that would of course be T sub naught and that would be 12 over 2 12 over 2 RT sub naught which is 6 RT sub naught so that's the initial energy brought into the system and of course that still needs to be the total energy now there's another way in which we can look at the energy of gases in a in a system like that. We can think of it in terms of the kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy of one molecule is equal to 3 over 2 R times T. Now, not R because for one molecule we need to use K, where K is equal to R divided by the Avogadro's number. Because here we're just dealing with one molecule rather than a mole of molecules. So if we deal with a mole of molecules, we can say that the kinetic energy of one mole therefore would be, well, Avogadro's number times as many, that would be 3 over 2 R times T. But this is only if the molecule has translational kinetic energy. So this is only good for translational kinetic energy. And for translational kinetic energy, there are three degrees of freedom which means that the molecule can move in the x direction, it can move in the y direction, it can move in the z direction, and for each degree of freedom, it has one, yeah, one half RT. For a moment there, I was looking at the wrong thing. So the kinetic energy for one mole for one degree of freedom is equal to one half RT. And of course, since there's three degrees of freedom, we multiply times three, so we get three RT. But that's only if we take into account the translational kinetic energy. If a molecule is a diatomic molecule, it can also have rotational kinetic energy. And it can rotate like this, and it can rotate like this. For a diatomic molecule, there's an additional two degrees of freedom. So the kinetic energy for one mole of a diatomic molecule that's equal to 5 over 2 RT. So now, if we add the kinetic energy of one mole of a monatomic gas plus the kinetic energy of one mole of a diatomic gas, 
then we also have the total amount of kinetic energy in terms of the kinetic energy of the molecules. So now what we can do is we can say that the kinetic energy total must equal the internal energy total. And the kinetic energy total for the helium is going to be 3 over 2 R times T plus for the, for the nitrogen will be 5 over 2 RT which has to add up to the total internal energy of 6 RT sub naught. And of course the R's can cancel out and now we can solve this equation for the temperature and that will be the final temperature of the mixture. So when we add these together we get 8 over 2T is equal to 6T sub naught or 4T is equal to 6T sub naught and that means that if we divide both sides by, t, by 4, we get t is equal to 6 over 4 t sub naught, or t is equal to 3 over 2 t sub naught. And that will be the final temperature of the mixture after we mix the two gases together. So we have to be careful. We do have to take into account the fact that one of the molecules is a diatomic molecule, and therefore there's five degrees of freedom, so when we get the kinetic energy for that, we need to use five over two RT, and the other molecule is a helium, it's a monatomic molecule, the kinetic energy will be three over two RT. Of course, that would be the kinetic energy for a mole of the molecules. If we just use a single molecule, we have to use K, but for a whole mole of molecules, we'll use R. And then we set that equal to the total internal energy of the gas, which can be calculated using this equation, the internal energy equals N, the number of moles, C sub V, the specific heat of the gas, times the temperature. And so that, when we set those equal to each other, we end up with the temperature for the final mixture is 3 halves T sub naught. And that is how it's done. Interesting problem. It happens a lot thermodynamics. <laughs> if you like thermodynamics. But it, it's kind of interesting, so it really shows how you can compare the internal energy of a gas using this equation to the energy of the gas in terms of the kinetic energy of the molecules. They have to be equal, and that's how it's done. <laughs>